Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Overcoming Graduation with Brian Drury, a show where I work to teach you everything I wished I had known about life to help you graduate to the next level in your own. Today is another installment of The Morning Commute, where I take my ride to work in the morning to share a short but powerful message with you to help you kick your day off on the right foot. And today's message is this. Balance. Balance is one of the most elusive and, I guess, hotly contested topics in not just personal development, but in any article, blog, post, YouTube video. You'll hear some people say balance doesn't exist. You'll see, hear people say balance is the most important thing in life. You'll hear back and forth. You'll hear up and down. I've heard it said just about every different way. I've heard people say there is no work-life balance because work and life are the same thing. I've heard people say that um, you have to balance your health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality, but that at times the scales will shift and you need to focus more in one area versus another. So I've heard all kinds of different things. What's tough about that, what's frustrating about that is we want to be able to get one source of truth for the things in our lives. Whether that's the proper way to cook a chicken or the right workout to do to get X results, we're trying to find truths that work for us at that point in our lives. Because it's not just about finding your truth, period, because I think that pulls away from something I've talked about in earlier episodes about the eternal curiosity. If you just say, well, that truth that I have right now is the truth, period, and I'm never going to challenge that or look into it or try to gain a deeper understanding of it, then it's kind of a sense of ignorance because you're choosing not to see potentially greater things or things that could be an even better solution to the problem you're facing. And it's really interesting when it comes to balance because we are creatures of habit. Our minds are set up to try and keep us in our comfort zones. Our comfort zones reside in habit. And if you think about it from just an energy usage perspective, if the brain is trying to minimize the amount of energy it uses, it wants to go into habit loops because that is an area it doesn't have to think to keep you safe is the perception. It's like, I know if I drive this route to work at this speed like this, I will get to work safe. I know if I eat these things from these restaurants or that I cook, I will be safe. So it can go into almost autopilot where you're driving to work and all of a sudden you're pulling into your spot and you don't really know how you got there. Where you start prepping some food and again, just go on autopilot and all of a sudden food's ready and you're like, oh, okay, I guess it's time to eat. Where did those last two hours go? So... An interesting thing about creating balance is it often takes us actively challenging our mind's default setting. And our mind's default setting is to put us into habits. So when those habits aren't serving us or they aren't creating the balance that we want in our lives, well, then we got to adjust some things. I think the solution or the way that I've perceived it that makes the most sense for me in terms of balance is that you do need balance in life. Like you can't just ignore certain areas where, oh, okay, I'm just going to focus on my business right now and I don't give a shit about my health. And it's like, well, we know how that goes. <laughs> There's plenty of extremely unhealthy, very financially wealthy people that don't have good habits around what they eat or drink or their sleep. But when money becomes the top priority and there is no other balance, there is no other factor that weighs in, then, sure, they can have tons of money, but at what cost? Same thing is, it's like, okay, my health and fitness is going to be the number one focus and priority. Nothing else matters. So you're going to work out six times a day, um, eat 12 meals a day, and try to be a bodybuilder. It's like, okay, that's... But you, if if you're going to be a bodybuilder, great. But if that's not where you're trying to go, it's going to cause other areas of your life to suffer. So for me, I know the best times in my life are when I've been physically active. I've been eating well. I've had some form of 
um, quiet stress relief. And what I mean by that is either like a meditation or journaling, something that allows me to vent, process, and reframe things that are going on in my mind. Because we can get stuck in very negative loops. And I know (laughs) because my mind can be very good at this. (laughs) We can get stuck in loops where we have a ridiculous negative thought that we choose to believe and reinforce and we continue to find proof for it but we go but that's not true and then we keep fighting to keep that thought where when I journal and put it down on paper and get it out of my head and I can have it in front of me it's almost as if I'm looking at it from a third person perspective even though it's the idea that came from my head I can look at it as almost an external party and treat it like I would if I was talking to a friend. And the interesting thing is we often are super helpful, supportive, caring, gentle, sweet, kind, you name it, to our friends. We're there for them. We'll do everything we can for them. But then when it comes to taking care of our needs, we deprioritize ourselves. It's a very interesting thing that can happen if we don't have... One, a sense of balance, but two, clarity on the importance of self-care and prioritizing our needs as well. So putting it down on paper is one way to do it. Meditation is another. I do a variety of different meditations, and when I'm doing them consistent, consistently, it's amazing the difference I feel. I remember when I was younger, I thought that this difference would be this like lightning bolt from heaven type of difference where I suddenly, you know, hit nirvana and was floating and levitating and it was this massive thing. But what I noticed with meditation for me was that it was much more subtle. It's a much gentler shift. And if you're not paying attention, you might not even notice it. But when I was doing it consistently, all of a sudden, it's I wasn't as stressed as much. I wasn't as angry or easily set off as before. I didn't find myself obsessing about negative things for no reason and focusing on stuff or creating problems that weren't actually there. So that process of creating balance in that way where my emotional and mental state has a way of releasing because the physical activity does a portion of that But a lot of times my physical activity is so intense that I'm not sitting there and really processing and kind of working my way through it and thinking about different ways to imagine it and finding the gift and a challenge. That's just more like, let's bring up the anger or let's bring up the frustration, just burn it off so that I can approach that situation with not just a clearer head, but a different emotional state. Because if all it's doing is making you angry, 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 frustrated, pissed, well, You need to find a way to get through that emotion so that you're able to do an activity like journaling or like meditation or just a deep breathing activity or have a conversation with someone to work through it. I love having tools that I can use myself at any point because I love talking to people, but let's say it's one of those 3 a.m. type of nights or just late at night you don't want to or can't call anyone because you'd wake them up and so you need a way to release it but you can't for yourself at that point when that stuff happens it's great to have tools now let's say talking it out with your best friend may be your ideal way this is just an alternate way may not be the first choice but it's a way that's going to help may not help 100% but maybe it helps 90 and that's a huge difference so the emotional and the mental balance that helps to release a lot the physical um, business we need to create value in the world provide for ourselves and the people we care about and to be able to create the lifestyle we want so there has to be some prioritization of the work that you do and whether it's your entrepreneurial endeavor or if it's a company that you work for or both There has to be a level of dedication and commitment to that as well. So the thing with that is very often, especially in the United States, 
that can become the focus at the expense of everything else. The focus on wealth creation and wealth strictly in the financial sense can become such a tunnel vision focus that we lose sight of so many other important things. And these are all examples and not necessarily stereotypes, but these are all concepts that we're familiar with. We've heard of, you know, the the executive CEO who's never been to his son's soccer game or the guy who has billions of dollars, but he's divorced and doesn't talk to his family anymore because he was so focused on that that he missed all of this. It's a common story in our minds, whether or not we see it as something common in terms of what we've experienced and what we've seen. But it is really easy to see how that completely unobstructed focus on business and business alone where there are no obstructions between your focus on that and you but there are obstructions between that and everything else that can create a whole nother set of issues so this episode was more just about me talking through balance i don't really have a solution it's one of this is one of many things i'm working on and even as i talk about meditation i'm like man i really haven't been meditating I do a meditation almost every night before bed, just a couple of minutes of breathing that helps me relax. But there are different meditations that I do to help me process things in my life, to help me work through emotional challenges, to help me reframe painful things from my past. And those are the ones where I get a lot more value. I mean, sure, it's it's great in that it helps me to get to sleep, but there's more of a deliberate practice to process emotional challenges that I have been lacking in. So it's interesting because, all right, I I can make excuses and say, well, I was sick for a week. And it's like, well, maybe meditation would have helped. There's all kinds of stuff. But I think the important thing, I think maybe the lesson here is not to always work to achieve perfect balance. It's to recognize that different things will take different priority at different points in your life. There will be times where your health will need to be your number one priority. And it will take more time than a lot of other areas or take more time than it normally does. Think about when you're sick and you need to recover. Think about maybe it's someone else's health and there's someone who's dealing with something, battling something, and you need to be there for them. But the important thing is to recognize where it's falling out of balance, why it's falling out of balance, and what can you do to realign it? Because there won't always be these opportunities to have everything be perfectly aligned. I, I think it's, it, it's a very, very hard balance to create. And I know very high-level people who still struggle with that. And I think it's a lifelong battle. People that I look at that I assume, oh, they must have perfect balance and everything, otherwise they wouldn't be able to do all these things, and that's really not the case. It's that they have learned how to deal with and work through the imbalances in a way that enables them to live the life they want. So today, simple challenge will be to look at your life and see where an imbalance exists. Just one. Just something that has been off for a while. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's personal. Maybe it's spiritual. Maybe it's relationships. Could be anywhere. Where something just hasn't been getting the attention and time it deserves. And I want you to think about what is one way that you could dedicate. Maybe, and it depends on what the thing is. What's one way you could take 10 minutes that has been spent somewhere else that isn't value added, that's, you know, maybe you're just scrolling on Instagram and dedicate it towards that? Because you'd be amazed what 10 minutes of conversation about a relationship, 10 minutes of exercise, 10 minutes of deep breathing can do for you. If you did 10 minutes of meditation today, you'd be amazed. Like, that's something I've aspired to for years. I think mostly my consistent times have been like five minutes a day. So 10 minutes a day can be a game changer. 
So what is one area of imbalance in your life and what can you shift to take 10 minutes as being essentially wasted by your definition somewhere else and allocate it to this area that needs attention and focus? I love you guys. Thank you all for listening today. This is another episode of The Morning Commute on Overcoming Graduation. If this episode was of value to you, please share it out with your friends and following. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. And if you would like to reach out to me directly, please feel free to contact me at brian at overcominggraduation.com with recommendations for episodes, interviewees, questions you have, or if you want to contact me about speaking engagements, whatever it may be, please feel free to reach out at brian at overcominggraduation.com. I love you guys. Have a great day, and let's go work on getting some more balance.